Good evening everybody, it's Valerie Ling here, clinical psychologist, and these days your Dr. Burnout. I hope you're having a lovely uh, time at the moment with uh, wherever you're at, whatever you're doing. Currently, I'm in the midst of practicing my six R's. My six R's are essentially, I, I suppose it's a, it's a, it's discipline, uh, a kind of a way of recognizing the ups and the downs, the ebbs and the flows of what you're going through. Um, having been through a fairly long conference this week with highly charged material, lots and lots of human beings and conversations, um, I packed in two days of recovery to practice my six R's. If you would like to know what those six R's are, um, so I will put the links into the comments so that you can have a look. I also was reflecting on the degree of um, something that I've been reflecting on, I think is about how much we actually hang on to the things that feel familiar that we just don't question anymore. Let me give you some really simple examples of what this might look like. For example, if you go to the dentist, I'm sorry dentists if you are listening to this, um, and you are somebody who sits in the chair and by default, actually, your breath starts to hitch and you clench your fist and you're sitting there really rigid. And this is your way of preparing. And you think to yourself, well, actually, you don't think to yourself, it's fairly sub, uh, subliminal that this is what I need to do when I'm sitting at the dentist's chair. What's that about? Well, probably somewhere in the deep recesses of your mind, there's an assumption that there's something that you can do while you're sitting there waiting for the dentist to work on you. And a feeling that, well, if I clench my fists and I kind of gear myself up, I'll be able to take whatever comes my way. Now, the irony to that is the more that we clench our fists, the more that we tighten our abdominal, our abdominal muscles and our jaws clench and our shoulders, the less relaxed we're actually going to be, probably the more agony um, it's going to be to get through that procedure. So I find these days that when I'm sitting uh, in the dentist in the chair, dentists are great people. I mean, think about it. They spend the whole day looking at you, uh, looking at um, mouths and teeth and people who, are in, who don't want to be there. Uh, but it could be an altogether pleasurable experience if I tried something different, which is to slow down my breathing, release my clenched fists, and actually relax my body. And by proxy, I don't know if you try this, you will notice that your dentist was also likely relaxed because they're now thinking, oh, I don't have to worry about you. You seem fine. Everything's going okay. A lot of times that's what we do with life. We basically go through some motions uh, that we think will provide us with a degree of control, a sense that we're being more prepared, a feeling like we've got to hold it all together. And the more we hold, we hold in, um, in our fists, the more we're going to actually be able to uh, achieve or feel in control or, ha or hold it all together. However, a lot of the times that just prevents other people from stepping into the space when we let go, when we relax and have a, an alternate view of how things might happen. Let me give you another classic example. How many mums here or dads um, enjoy school lunches? Now, by this stage, New South Wales, um, kids are back to school. And I have to say that one of the things I used to like about school holidays was that you didn't have to make school lunches. Now, that was a, a, a while ago when my kids were younger and I was the one that had to do the school lunches. And I found myself actually getting into a state where I kept thinking, gosh, uh, what if what if their lunch is like boring as compared to the other kids? Conversely, what if it's like really unhealthy as compared to the other kids? What if my poor kid is sitting there um, and theirs is like the most pathetic looking a sandwich as compared to the rest of the kids and what they have? Or am I actually doing this right? Uh, 
Is it actually okay for a kid to have jam sandwiches every day? Is it actually okay for them to uh, have, you know, whatever? And it's going around and around. And you know what? The more you go like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, the bigger the headache gets, the more awful you feel about school lunches. And then you embody this belief that school lunches are evil. <laughs> Some time ago, I decided to actually challenge that and release that uh, a little bit and see what would happen if I actually engaged in some conversations with the family. For example, just saying, hey, uh, tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, go and open the fridge. What do you see in there for your school lunch? <laughs> or go and open the pantry cupboard. Behold, before you, what can you see for your recess? And um, the more I did that, the more I realized that my perspective of trying to stock things up and, you know, get all this, like what I thought a sandwich needed to look like was mostly in my head. When I actually opened up the cupboards and opened up the conversations, some light fell in because other ideas came in. Some reality testing came in as well. Yes, one of my children is perfectly happy to take some very basic sandwiches. Uh, back then when they were a kid, they explained to me because it impaired their ability to eat quick and go and play, right? Who knew? I thought like the more layers they had, you know, the more gourmet it looked and no, nah, it wasn't important to them. So when we're actually in this space where we're thinking we've got to hold on to things, we've got to juggle all the different balls in the air, and we've got to make it happen, there is a possibility, a slight and yet significant, significant possibility that if we open things up, if we allow other people to come into that picture and we engage in some conversations, we might actually find a totally different picture and we might actually find that we start to relax into the space that we're sitting in and other people actually get to enjoy coming into that space with us. Have a lovely evening.